Okay, today we are playing Catan, Expansion, Cities, and Knights. So if this is kind of the second expansion, so if you're unsure of how to play Catan, the Settlers of Catan, the first game, check out our other videos, our other blogs on that one first before you watch this one, because this is kind of the second in the series. So these are all the pieces that you're going to need. So we're going to take some time to quickly set up the board, put on the numbers, and set up our play area. And uh, we will be back to show you how to play the game. cards there are progress cards right here so you get those if you roll on this white die the blue castle the yellow castle or the green castle and it matches in your city develop in your city improvement book the red die you will get a progress card we'll show you how to do that later as well, the other new things, there's victory points here. The metropolises. The merchant. And the three commodities. Oh, and the barbarian ship is right here. So, let's roll to see who goes first. I'll take that. Okay, mom's going first. Okay, so mom's going to place first. And she's placing a settlement first. Over there. She so placed your settlement and your road. Kids. So the instruction booklet does have a layout of exactly how you can, the best rounded basically with numbers and the, the hexes. Um, however, if you're like us and you've played the game lots, um, we set up the board randomly. So dad placed his settlement because he was third. He's also playing placing a city. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the differences between the original what? and Cities and Knights is instead of placing two settlements, you place one city and then a settlement. Okay, kids. We're going to bed. So once you've placed your settlement and your city, you will pick up the resources, not the commodities, just the resources, one per hex. So blue will pick up wood, rock, and wheat. All right, so it's mom's turn first. Roll. Three and a barbarian. 
So if you roll a barbarian, the boat right here moves to the next circle. It's a three. I cannot do anything. Okay, five barbarian. So you can see white has a city on a pasture. So instead of picking up two sheep, he's going to pick up one sheep and one wool or one cloth, sorry. I have a city on the wheat. There's no commodity that goes with wheat. So I'm just going to pick up two wheat. Four. Four with a blue, blue. castle. Four. Now, none of us have any city improvements flipped yet. So we'll explain that when something actually gets rolled and we have it flipped. What do you guys want? What do you guys want to get the brick? What do you want? I'm not giving you brick. So would that, would that work? No. So dad is paying one cloth, so he gets to flip over his city improvement. So if we zoom in, you'll see that if a yellow castle is rolled and the red die is one or two, he will get to choose a yellow resource card or a yellow progress card, which has these all have special abilities that you can have. I don't know. All right, so we're going to speed up play here um, just until something different happens because most people who are watching this know how to play the regular guitar. paused it here because dad just rolled a green castle and the red die is one. The kids on their last turn upgraded their city improvement. So they will get a green resource or progress card. They will keep that hidden and secret until they want to use it. They can only have five in their hand. So, I rolled a seven. However, in Cities and Nights, until the barbarians land for the first time, the robber stays in the desert. So, that's kind of how this one works. So, just gives you a chance to collect stuff to start building your knights. Okay, so I'm going to buy my first knight. So, for one rock and one sheet, I can buy one of these and I can place him. I'm gonna put him here. Somewhere at the end of a road. So you can see he's black and white. Now, if I pay a wheat, I can flip him over. That means that as a team, the players have one point. The barbarians have as many points as cities. So right now the barbarians have one, two, three, four. So if the barbarians were to attack, us players would lose and we would all lose a city. So that's how the knights work. And we'll speed up play. Sheep and a rock.
rock to upgrade one of my knights. So you can see on all the knights, if I just put them out here, they have circles kind of around them. So this kind of knight is worth one, two, and three points. You cannot build the three unless it's your special power uh, with the coins. City improvement. But I'm going to remove this one and replace him with a two-point knight. So now the players have three points, but the barbarians still have four. have landed. The players have three points. The barbarians have four points. So the players lose. So the people with the least amount of knights, which is dad and the kids, they both lose a city. So they would lose their city and replace it with a settlement. Also, my knights are now deactivated. So they stay, but I have to reactivate them with wheat. Okay, so dad placed a knight, and I just wanted to point out, so if you place, if he would have placed it right here, you cannot place a city there. So that you kind of want to place your knights in between so. the settlements because you cannot build a building here if you have it there. You can move the knights along your road, which would deactivate them, but it's best just to place them kind of where you want them at first. <laughs> progress card. They are playing, got it? The inventor. So they actually get to move some numbers around on the board. So the only thing with the inventor is you can't move the red ones and you can't move the two and the twelve. five points and the barbarians have one two so the players win blue has the most knights on the board so I win a victory point <laughs> knights here if I would like to promote. The other players cannot. 
So that's that superpower. which is a city wall because I keep getting caught with way more resources in my hands than I'm allowed. So you just take the city wall, put it under your city, and now I can hold two more resources. So I get to hold nine instead of just the seven. Okay, so I am going to level three with my paper city improvement. So the bonus is if you receive no production on a turn and the roll is not a seven, you may take one resource of your choice. Okay, so the kids just cashed in a progress card, a road building one. So they built, they got their longest road, but then Ryder pointed out there is no largest army. So we went ahead and put that in, but it's actually not in play. There is no largest army in Cities and Knights. Dad is playing a progress card now, which is the Alchemist. So he will play this card and he gets to decide the deck. And the only one he will actually roll is the white die. So it's going to be a eight and it's a barbarian. attacked again. So the players have one, two, three, four, five, and the barbarians have one, two. So players win. Mum has the most knights on the board. I get another victory point, and all knights are turned in active. I'm playing the merchant card. So this is the merchant, and I place him on the hex that I want to be able to trade two to one. So I have some extra wool in my hand that I want to trade in. So now I can trade it two to one, and I'm going to be taking a wood. He will stay there until somebody else plays the merchant card and moves him away from me. The merchant only helps me. It does not help red, even though they are built on the same hex. I am using now the spy. So I get to look at dad's progress cards. and I get to steal one, but I can't play it on this turn. So the kids are playing Smith. So they get to promote up to two of their knights for free. can do is to displace the robber. So dad's robber is, or dad's knight is active. So he's going to displace the robber, which means he gets to move him somewhere else. So go ahead and move him. But the knight goes in, away, no? nope. but the nope. knight goes inactive. So now it's like rolling a seven. He will place it somewhere, steal from the player, Okay, I am playing 
medicine, which means I get to build a city for one less wheat and one less rock. So they win a victory point. <laughs> gives me two extra victory points. So this city here together is worth four points. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I am at ten points. Cities and Knights goes up to twelve victory points. So a little bit longer than the original Settlers of Catan. <laughs> So he gets two wheats or grain from each field hex that he has on. So he will pick up four wheats. Unpause. What else? Nothing. Hmm? What would you like? Oh, tens. I should be picking up here. Oh, me too. No, you have a 10. No, but for all yeah. the other, I totally forgot. Mm. I know we have it, and like we never get, we never pick them up. Forget all the time. So. so. Metropolis cities look really cool. I think I'm going to win on the next round, you guys, so. Because um, I'm pretty sure Cadmere got two metropolis. Mm -hmm. One on. You're at 10. How do you want to get two points? One on science and one, one on metropolis. One metropolis, that's all it's going to take. Yeah. Okay, we are going to trade in, or I am going to trade in, four brick for a paper. Improve my science city improvement. Therefore, nobody has it yet, so I'm going to place my metropolis here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And mom wins cities and knights. Catan expansion. Check out the other videos of all the pieces. Check out our blog for lots of other games. And keep on playing. Have fun! Thank you.